Good afternoon. I need a bowl, then go get it. Because <laughs> you don't have one, and you'll want it. <laughs> so, I'm often asked uh, why we do this service at 2 o'clock, because this is the hour that is approaching the crucifixion. And um, so, uh, having in the afternoon, 3 o'clock, he was crucified. So we're approaching that time. I welcome you in this time where we commemorate. Uh, sometimes we wonder why it is Good Friday, because Jesus died. And yet, if, uh, as, um, oh, what's his name? Um, Singer, comedian, um, Mark Lowry. Mark Lowry. Yes, as I said before, when Mark was a boy, and uh, watching a film of Jesus's, um, and, and they were crying out, "Crucify him! Crucify him!" And, and he was like, "No, Jesus is a good guy." And he shouted out, "No!" And his brother reached across and slapped his hand across his face and said, "Shut up!" If he doesn't die, we all die. And so, in that sense, it is Good Friday. Because without the death of Christ, we have no hope. So I call you into this time of worship. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. God did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. Greater love has no one than this, that person lay down his life for a friend. Let us pray. Almighty God, over of all mankind, you loved us so much that you sent your son to be among us. We know that he humbled himself not only in becoming a human being, but he humbled himself to the point of death upon the cross. A gruesome and ugly cross. And so we come today to remember to remind ourselves of the significance of his sacrifice for us. Lord, as we receive his sacrifice in our hearts and lives, and as we seek to devote ourselves to you, we ask that your grace would be merciful and that we would be made anew and afresh we might receive life everlasting. Be with us in this time as we remember and as we accept your gracious gift to us. We thank you that our Lord Jesus Christ is with you and the Holy Spirit forever. You are one God from the beginning and for all times. Amen. Our first uh, scripture reading is from Isaiah, the 52nd chapter. If you're wanting to follow in the Pew Bible, it's page 779. There. Page number seven hundred and seventy nine, Isaiah fifty two, beginning in verse thirteen and reading down through the twelfth verse of the fifty third chapter.
Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut up their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them they see, and that which they have not heard they understand. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of a dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and as one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that was led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with wicked and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief when his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring, he shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquity. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you would take your hymnals and Turn to number 239. I invite you, if you're able, to stand with us and join in singing. Isaac Watts' hymn, When I Survey the Cross. Wondrous Cross. 239. Oh, uh -huh. 
Hebrews chapter 4, reading verses 14 through 16, last uh, three verses of the chapter, and then in verse, in chapter 5, going to verse 7 through 9. Hebrews chapter 4, beginning at verse 14. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Going to chapter 5 down to verse 7. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of of eternal salvation to all who obey him. The word of the Lord. And as we go to prayer, um, we want to uh, remember uh, the concerns of our congregation and, um, and, and those of others. Uh, Shirley was saying last night that uh, she had a grandson who had surgery and uh, keep him in prayer. Uh, Alice Brown's uh, son 
uh, had surgery the first part of this week on his carotid arteries and is doing well, but I uh, continue to pray that, that he recuperates from that. Uh, the principal of our elementary school um, had open heart surgery, and uh, so keep uh, Mr. Caldwell in prayer uh, that he will recuperate well from that and, and be back uh, before the school year ends. Uh, it's his hope and plan to be back and uh, before the kids dismiss. Um, are there others that we need to remember this morning or this afternoon? Um, we got a message from Shania. Uh, she has an apartment as of next Monday. Uh, she'll sign the lease and, and move in. So. Um, Monday I'll be going down and getting the stuff out of the storage unit and then uh, working at getting the other things over to her. Uh, so uh, keep her in prayer in this transition in her life. Let us bow our hearts in prayer. Lord, we thank you for the many ways that you have blessed us and grace our lives. Over and over again, it would be impossible for us to count the ways in which your mercy has poured itself upon our lives. You have touched us in times of difficulty. You have sustained us and guided us through both physical health, financial, emotional needs. You have always been there. And you have promised that you will always be there, that you will never forsake your people, that you love us and care for us. Lord, as we continue to face different trials in life, in our own and those of our family and our friends, we lift them up to you as the great physician, the guide and comforter, but more than anything, Lord, we lift you up as our Savior. And that is the ultimate healing of our lives. And we come to know your grace, your forgiveness, the healing of our hearts and minds. Lord, we know that that is not an automatic process. And we must continue to keep ourselves before you. That your transforming grace might work in us and continue to shape our hearts and minds. So we ask that you would grant us wisdom and courage to face the trials and the struggles that we have in life. Our supposed sense of wants and needs that we might truly only desire that which you desire for us and that we would be appreciative of each and everything that you have given us and what you desire to do in and through our lives. Lord, you know the needs and thoughts on each of our hearts. You know those that have family members who do not know you or who have turned away from you. We place them before your hand right now. And on this day of remembrance of your sacrifice, that those who know that truth would come to realize the power of your grace and love. And those who do not know it, they would sense that you are calling them to them, to you. 
and that you would place in their way persons who would bear witness of your love and grace. Help us, Lord, in our lives that we would constantly be a witness of who you are and what you have done. That others might see and know We give you the praise for who you are and what you will do in and through your people. Lord, join our hearts and minds together as we pray as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Well, if you uh, want to follow along or listen along in our gospel reading this morning, or this afternoon, keep thinking of morning, uh, in John 19, we'll be reading uh, it's in the Pew Bible, it's page 1151. Going to read from the first of the chapter through this thirty-seventh verse. And as we go along and, and listen to these words, uh, when we come to the seventeenth word, uh, it has the word Golgotha in it. When you hear that, if you would stand uh, with me and remain standing, then through. Uh, the rest of the reading. John chapter 19, beginning in verse 1. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him. And the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him with a purple robe. They came up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews! and struck him with her hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing, you, bringing him out to you, that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priest and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I find no guilt in him. Jesus answered them, him, We have a, the Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He enters his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all, unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. 
Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat him on the judgment seat at a place called the Stone Pavement. And in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. And so he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription. For the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross where Jesus, where his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene, and Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he beloved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then they said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the body would not remain on the crosses on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that the legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth that you may also believe. For these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones 
will be broken. And again, another scripture says, they, took, look on, they will look on him whom they have pierced. The gospel of our Lord. May be seated. Kathy is going to sing for us now a song, He Grew the Tree. that you will listen to the words and let them speak to your heart this, this afternoon. He molded and built a small Used to make the old rugged 
rather than give a message this morning, I want us to just hear the last seven words of Jesus. May they be the words that speak into our hearts. After I read these seven passages, we'll have another few moments of just silence and reflection, meditation on what Jesus has done for us. First reading from Luke, the 23rd chapter, verse 34, and then verse 43. Rather than trying to turn and flip through these, I want you just to listen. Hear the words. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Woman, behold your son. Behold your mother. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I thirst. It is finished. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit.
May Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on the cross, keep you and strengthen you, guide you, and form you from his, in his love, now and forever.